I'm just going to move them over like that because these, in, this input and out, uh, this input and ground and output actually isn't going to appear um, on the etch because the etch is just going to be um, a single-sided um, copper etch like you do, um, like you etch yourself. Um, so they're not even going to be on the PCB. So you might as well, we might as well just get them off. And um, you're probably saying, what? Well, what do you mean, get them off? Um, we'd, we'll, we'll do that now. Um, first, we'll do the copper pour, and then we'll do the panelizing. Um, so the copper bore is pretty easy. Um, before you click on the copper bore, the copper pour um, tool is at the top there, place copper pour, that little blue square. Before you do that, um, you want to check what net number the ground um, the ground track is. So right click on it, and at the top it tells you um, net two. So with that in mind, go up to the um, place copper pour and click on it. And then you just want to place a square around your, um, your layout. Um, so just click in the first corner. Um, of the square, go across. Um, if you hold, uh, no, um, some programs when you hold shift, um, it'll actually make the, um, it'll make the uh, line go straight, but um, this one doesn't do it, doesn't matter. Just line it up as straight as you can. Uh, I'm just doing this um, relatively roughly. I'd make, you can make this, this effect so much smaller if you spent some time on it, um, but we're just doing something for the sake of learning. Um, now on the last corner, you don't actually press the button because you'll you'll um, create another point. So as you can see, I haven't pressed the button here. You just leave it where you want it. It's something that's a bit diff tricky to remember, but yeah, you just put it where you want it and then don't sneeze on your mouse, just hit enter. And then it comes up with the place copper pour um, property screen. Um, and um, that clearance is quite big. Um, you could lower that a little bit to 0.7. The clearance is the clearance between the copper pour and the rest of the um, the rest of the uh, connection uh, tracks and pads on the um, on the board. Um, so we'll put in 0.7 there, and then click on the connectivity tab at the top. And when it says connect to net, change that to net two, which is the ground plane, and then click OK, and you'll see what happens. The whoops. Just cancel that. I accidentally started um, making another copper pour. Um, the ground track, that's our ground track. You can see that now the ground track is actually part of the copper pour. So it is now a, um, a ground plane. It's not connected. These bits are di actually disconnected, as you can see, um, around the outside. Um, doesn't really matter um, for something so simple as this buffer. If you did want to connect them up together, just highlight the... Um, the uh, the copper pour, um, you just put your mouse over where the line is around the outside of it. Uh, right click and go properties and then um, go to connectivity, uh, oh, sorry no, go to clearance and change the clearance a bit. Remember as you lower that clearance it's going to get harder to etch um, but just keep messing around with it until you, until you connect things up that you want connected and, and, and all that. Um, uh, just yeah, the way that you want it to be. I'm not going to do any of that. I'll leave it up to you to, to mess around with that, those sorts of things, but you know what to do now. And also, if you change, like if you say, oh, actually that resistor could go down a little bit like that. Oh, look at that. It's actually going into the, into the ground plane. Um, the pad's now part of the ground plane. Make sure before you finalize your, your, um, your layout uh, that you update the, update the copper pour. So right click on the copper pour, and you'll see the top says update, and then you'll see that the um, that it updates the um, copper pour to where you've moved the tracks. Um, there's actually you can also just click on the copper pour to select it, and then on the right hand side there's update there as well. And there's a few other options too, so you can see connect to nets there, um, and some of the other stuff that we've been doing clearance, um, and there's a few other things that you can mess around with. Um, so that's the copper pour, and then you've just got one more um, one more border element to put down, which is for panelizing, and I'll just briefly explain what panelizing is, so you know why we're doing it. Um, with dip trace, there's a pin limit on uh, a pad limit. You, I think it's about two or three hundred pads um, and um, or pins. Um, and the um, the problem with 
Yeah, I mean, you could just select this whole thing, highlight the whole thing, go copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, and then and then lay them out. But that's a lot of work, and it also adds to your pin limit, so yeah, or pad limit, or whatever it is. Um, but uh, uh, if you keep putting them down, you're going to hit a pad limit, particularly with a complicated um, effect. You're going to hit that pad limit. So what what it's what's better to do is to panelize the um, uh, panelize the PCB and you'll see what, what happens with that when we actually do it. Um, it's probably something that would be um, easier to understand when you see it rather than me trying to explain it. So go edit at the top and then go panelizing. Oh no, sorry. Before you do that you've got to lay down the panel. Um, so you're looking for the board um, place um, the uh, place board outline um, uh, uh, tool which is actually I've gone blank I think it's um, it's under oh, objects um, place board outline um, and just click on that and it's the same sort of thing as you did with the um, copper pour just put a just put an outline around the um, around the effect like so and then don't click on the last one just just hit the enter button when you're done which is there uh, I'll just try to get that straight so we've got a little bit of neatness going on here and then go enter, and then um, you've got your um, you've got your board outline, and then if you um, uh, if you go to edit and then panelizing, you can set how you want to panelize um, uh, your, how many you want of your board. Um, so let's just go four like this and go OK, and then you've got um, three other copies. So when you print this off, you'll have four copies of your board uh, on the on the page. Um, but if you're going to be etching this one yourself, there's no there's no clearance between um, uh, any of these any of these boards, and you're going to end up cutting into your into your um, into your board layout. So you might want to actually put a bit of space in between um, these uh, th these um, uh, these boards. So go go back to panelizing again. And in X spacing and, and Y spacing, put in how many millimeters you want. Um, I, I think I usually do about four millimeters approximately because uh, I use a hacksaw, so uh, I, I need a bit of space to cut through. Um, so yeah, four millimeters on each. Actually, no, that's way too much. Um, I think it's probably more like about two. I can't remember actually. I haven't done a single-sided um, board for quite a while, um, but yeah, just mess around with that. Maybe print a couple off just to check um, if you can cut without damaging the boards. Um, but that's pretty, believe it or not, that's pretty much it. Now we're just going to print it. Um, and um, this is a very easy part. You just go File, um, Preview. And there's a couple of things to note. You can see we've got our four boards there. On the, in the preview, it shows you the four boards. Um, and this is at, print scale is at 100%. Uh, 100%. So I'm assuming that this is actually going to come out at this size um, I don't know if maybe the ratio has changed with YouTube or the video, but you can see how small those tracks are. And I did that at 0.5 of a mil. So I don't know. I mean, you might be comfortable etching at that at that um, size, but I would actually probably make that a, a touch bigger, maybe 0.7. Um, uh, but you just have to play around with that anyway. Print off a couple of test runs before you um, before you commit one way or another to um, to um, how you how you've um, put your spacing board spacing and your um, and your and your trace width. Um, so if you print it off now, you're going to have all this green crap, and the labels are going to come out as well. Um, and you obviously don't want that for a uh, a layout that you're printing for an etch. So click on if you want to zoom in. Um, just before we do that, if you want to zoom in, just go up to the top here and go scale and change scale. Don't change print scale because if you change print scale, if we go 200%, it's going to print. Your boards at 200%, and then nothing's going to fit. The, the, everything's going to be twice the size that it should be. So don't ever. Well, you you probably shouldn't um, unless you're doing a preview of the board, like you're giving it to somebody, and you want them to be able to see um, where the components are laid out on the board. You can change the print scale. But if you if you're printing um, something you're going to etch, you always leave that at 100%. Um, you want to change the scale at the top, which is just like the preview scale. So that's at 300%. Um, just so you can check it over before you um, before you print off your your um, uh, your etch your etchable print, um, and to get rid of all those little bits and pieces um, that have showed up, just go objects and then just remove um, all these layers until you get to board, and then you'll see that you've only you've just got the board, you've just got the boards there, and then you can 
you can transfer those onto your copper board and you can um, you can etch them and you've got yourself four buffers that you can um, that you can make and play around with and add to your effects and or build build four pedals and give them to your mates and all that sort of stuff. That's the best thing about this PC doing um, doing uh, designing layouts um, PCB layouts is is what you can do once you've um, once you've got your effect. Just make sure you test it first before you start going, you know, before you start printing off a hundred of them, um, because it's very easy to make a, um, a mistake um, copying it from the schematic. So you just want to make sure that you've got your um, you've got your stuff right before you start going into mass production, so to speak. Um, and um, and that's pretty much I think that's pretty much it. I think I've pretty much covered um, everything that I can think of to get you started at least um, uh, in um, in doing PCB layouts for single layer. Um, double layer fabrication is a bit different, and I'll um, I'll do a separate video on that um, because there's a few different things to explain for that um, than there is with the um, single layer. Um, but um, but that's pretty much it for single layers. You should be able to make your own now. Um, um, based on that information, it's pretty much a, uh, a a crash course in everything that I know, and probably a bit more of a refined tutorial than my last dip trace tutorial. Um, but um, yeah, subscribe if you want to see the um, next video, um, or the next videos, dip trace videos with, that I'll upload, um, being the fabrication one and how to upload your files onto OSH Park as well. I'll be covering that too because that can be a little bit tricky um, to work out if you're new to all this. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more pedal-related um, videos and tutorials.